<sighs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to NG. I am your official host. That is loud. I'm your official host, Pickle Robin. How y'all doing? Pretty good. Last time we left off, we did some investigating of the, the Miroka residence. And we were about to discover some more shit, but we cut off the investigation. So now, this time we're gonna go in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat up the, the screaming author. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I am I'm I am a bit nervous. Because of like the scares that might come up soon enough. Saturday, the fourteenth. Uh August, as usual. The sun sets and the meeting time approaches. Bond and Rose seem like the type that don't mind making others wait, but hate keep but hate being kept waiting. Lamau. I'd better head out. <laughs> It'd be like that, you know. This feeling. Yep, it's here. <laughs> At this point, he just like, hello, hello, mouths. It's me, boy. Out here again. A whisper comes from somewhere. It's time for a tale. The man found a poor little birdie. The man wanted to save the little, the little birdie. Huh. The whispering stops. Cold sweat slides on my cheek and drips off the peak of my chin. But my breathing remains composed. My heart rate is saying pretty steady too. Got any useless yet? Is it because I made up my mind to do this? Or am I just used to all this now? Even I'm not sure which is true. Damn bro. I leave my apartment and take a deep breath for fresh air. Tonight, we're gonna plan into this. Indeed. And I am ready. I arrive at the key such a station and make my way over to the Black Rabbit. The lights are on inside. Is Aunt Natsumi still there? Is she? Hey Kijima, I let myself in. Damn Rose. My throat's feeling a little better thanks to the meat I had. I walk in and find Rose in good spirits. Aunt Natsumi is nowhere to be seen. Did you break into the place again? Alcohol is a salve that heals life's wear and tear. You could even say it's it's a life companion. You don't understand when you become an adult. I, 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 I wouldn't say it's alcohol, I'd say it's coffee. Hey, so you're both here already. Pour me a glass too, Kijima. I'll take some of your top shelf bourbon on the rocks if you please. <laughs> Alright. Uh, do you ever get tired of being so surly? Is your practice smiling in front of a mirror? <laughs> our, lives are on, our, our lives are on the line again tonight. Indulging in a good drink when facing down that situation is to be expected. So come on, don't keep your customer waiting. This is going on your, on your tab? <laughs> I, I've helped Aunt Natsumi at the bar before, so I, I know what to do. I go behind the counter and pull the bottle from the back. But uh, I put some ice on a rock glass and pour the dark amber liquor in. Liquid in. A burnt smell wafts up. The bond impatiently snatches a glass from me and pours pounds down the liquor. Damn. Whew. I'll put, I'll put hair on your chest. So Kijima, did you get us some info about Miroku? More or less. I feel the mineral- God damn it, I, I have to stop doing that. I followed in on everything Aunt Natsumi told me about Yakumo Miroku last night. I see. It definitely looks like that cruel hobby of his has definitely made its way into his work. But I'm finding it hard to believe that he, ab he abduct and kill young girls just for his writing. I tried following the thread of those previous abductions. Over the past few decades, four girls went missing near, near the Miroku residence. Half a year ago, a middle school girl named, named Tsubasa Aoi vanished. Uh, she was on her way back from ballet class. She was a pretty girl who people had expected to become a prima donna and the prima donna in the future. On her way back from ballet class, that means, yeah, the recording on that tea tape is a news clip about Tsubasa Awe's abduction. We also found a ballet flyer in the mansion. Could that have been? Yeah, Tsubasa Awe was slated to perform in the show advertised on that flyer. I think she was the star of the second act. The second act was. Uh, Duck Lake. Yeah, Tsubasa Aoi, Aoi was going to play the part of the princess who gets her into a duck. She was apparently real excited for it and put her heart and soul into practicing. She went to the ballet classroom every day and danced barefoot until sunset. And then she went missing just before the show. She was so eagerly waiting to perform. Damn, that's kind of tragic actually. What a soul crushing tale, damn. You're right. I'm sure, I'm sure that was devastating for her. Okay, now for the rest. Ten years before that, a girl named Sachi Kirishima disappeared. 
Then 20 years ago, it was Ai Mishima. And the last one was 30 years ago, Hana Manabe. Do you have any, any more information on those three? Unfortunately, I couldn't fully investigate them. They're pretty old cases after all. All I know is they were all kids who were in their early teens. Tsubasa so Aoi was the only middle schooler, but the other three were all in elementary school. It's kind of fucked. The first letters of the name match the tapes, T-S-A-H. The pieces are all starting to fit together. I think we can safely assume that Yakumo Miroku abducted all those girls. Once every 10 years, a young girl around the same age was kidnapped by a children's author. Almost like a kind of ritual. It really piques one intro, one, one's curiosity. This is so weird. Miroku must have had some nerve. He kept kidnapping girls right by his house, and no one ever put the two into together. <laughs> Pretty much. I'd say it's the opposite, actually. For him, his neighborhood was the safest place to do it. Didn't your mother tell you? Most of Miroku's relatives are famous. Some of them are all on the Shinzo Ward Council, or they work somewhere in the government. Are you implying that Miroku used these people to get, like, any any suspicion off him? They probably kept all all hit off Miroku just to make sure they didn't get any, any blowback. Damn. If people suspected a relative of theirs was a criminal, they could lose their positions. And such is the disgusting state of the world. People really are the wor worst ones of all. Rose out here with that. We, we really do live in a society, though. For me, scumbags like that are a great business opportunity. <laughs> Enough of that, though. Time to get to the mansion and put an end to this. You're right. I'm expecting you to earn to. <laughs> I'm expecting you to earn that free drink you just had. Yeah, I'm planning on it, kid. I leave the black guy with two tipsy adults in tow. They're probably sober up by the time I get to, to the Miracle residence. I walk down alone a path that I'm already I'm already far too familiar with. Just before I'm inside of the Miracle residence, that horrifying presence appears once again. Oh, wait. Oh, it, it, it sped up. Found this mouth surface and began cruelly laughing. It's almost the finale of the tale. The bird comes, becomes a crane, and repays the man. Tonka. What? Uh, Tonkarari, Tonkarari from beyond the door. Ooh. The, uh, the thing. However, I don't feel too bent out of shape. I figured it'd come right about now. Hey, you're here. Hmm. What is it? You don't look good. Something happened on the way here? Well, that damn curse showed up. That time limit you were talking about. Malice that only you can see up here, right? Sounds crazy to me, but... Spiritual phenomena that only the affected person can perceive are quite common. Besides, Kijima has his blood metry, remember? It's not usual that he will see quite a few things that others can't. It's supposed to be a death curse, but... Or a death mark. Ooh, plug in. You don't seem too faced, Kijima. Well, it's the third time it's happened. I think I'm kind of getting used to it. Getting used to it? Seriously? Yeah, man. <laughs> you really are an interesting child. I've seen many cursed people, but I've never seen anyone as dauntless as you. I guess Rose is not the only one here who is fearless. I can't keep up with you two. Jeez. In any case, I don't have much time. This will be settled before the sun rises. I, I see. Guess it's the third day after all. And the uh, third episode, I think, of this whole spirit, maybe? I don't know. We're definitely getting closer to the truth. What it all comes down to it, our main issue, Rose looks up at the window, is the fact that we haven't gotten there. We'll get in there, no matter what. Come on. Let's go. Let's do this. Uh, I am taking a bond, actually, though. Alright. Rose, you'll be on the lookout. I bet. And I'll see you later. Alright, let's go. Let's go. Bam. We come to the first entrance of the, the financial of the Miracle Residence once again. These frames. That must mean we're supposed to hang the masks here. Yeah, I'm sure of that. My question is, where do we put each one? I know. Uh, actually, is, is there any reading on that? Let me examine the charm. Shall be something to indicate how some masks gets out here. It looks very so novelist, so these might be tied to fairy tales. Retribution, huh? Sounds like a common theme for fairy tales. 
Uh, Kachi Kachi Mountain comes to mind, but there's no rabbit or raccoon mask, so that's not it. Hmm. Examine the front, the charm. Not sure about the time put here. Middle could something. No, that's a bit of fairy tales. I'm afraid that, that deal with cherry blossoms, I think Hanasaka Jisan. You know, the one about the old man and neighbor that kills the treasure finding dog. In the end, the old man's cherry blossoms get him blessed, but the neighbors end up in jail. Man, Japanese all the time really love cherry blossoms. And to this day, they kind of do though, so my guess, not that, my guess is that the, uh, the dog mask so good, um, dog mask goes here. The dog mask? Bam. I mean, I mean, I mean, he did say, uh, where was it? Yeah, the old man and the kills the tre treasure finding dog. So it might be the dog one over there. What about this one? What does it say? Let me look at the, the charm. It must represent our masks. Mm -hmm. But the last is a really vague clue. Maybe for when the process of elimination, we can figure this out. You're not helping me out here, though. Process of elimination, huh? Wrong button. There we go. The monkey, though. Like the pheasant mask, pretty much. Uh, looks all the colored. I I can as uh. I guess I could do it in the order that I got them. Cause I think the last one was the the last mess that we got was the monkey one. Going going backwards and and the thingy was, it was the monkey. Then, dog I think. Then like, and then the pheasant mask I think. So I'll put the pheasant one here though. God damn it. Uh pheasant mask. Bam. Pheasant mask used. And then I guess I'll I guess I'll just put the monkey one here and see what happens. Cause, cause we also have the Okina mask, but mm, I have no idea. I'll I'll put the monkey mask and if it doesn't work, then I'll try something else. Put the monkey mask in the frame. Then, whoa! Well, I guess we got it. The entrance secret passageway opens up once again. Nice, great job. I was just lucky. Come on, it's gonna be something pretty important up ahead. <sighs> and neither is, and I'm not ready for it. So this one I'm gonna do. I'm going to. I'm gonna save. A as like a safety precaution. Gonna, yes, yes, plus. Ah oh, shit. It's on my eye. Eyelashes, please. Ugh. I hate it when something, when something gets in your eye. It's annoying. Alright, let's go. Something appears inside the secret passageway. It's a ladder. Man, it feels like we're finally going to put the finishing piece on this story. It certainly is giving off a dangerous vibe. We better prepare for anything and we're going to climb it. I mean, I saved, so we're good to go. <laughs> Earlier, the path is gone. Can I, can, I, can I go up the ladder? Let's go. Come up the ladder. I held my breath as I climb up the ladder, and it was exactly as we figured. The vast attic fills our vision. It's a pretty big attic, though. Look, look behind that sliding door. Yeah, let's be careful. I am not ready for this, but, screaming author, this ends here. I quietly edge over to the sliding door, as it, and as I extend my hand to open it, that's not good. What? What? An odd figure appears as we hear the voice. There it is. Is that thing the screaming author? We have to. I know it's dangerous, but we have to do this. No matter what's looking behind the door, we just can't turn our backs here. I force open the sliding door and attempt to rid myself of my fear and doubt. <gasps> what the fuck? Hmm? There's nothing here. It's Cap. That's what it looks like. All we see is a completely empty room.
The timer is steeped, steeped in blood. I should be able to see something. I knew on the tummy and adjust my breathing. I quietly press my palm against the mat. But. Oh, it doesn't work. A mass jumble images fill my mind, and I can't tie them into any single image. The only way this blood doesn't, doesn't just belong to one person. It's going to be really hard for me to get anything useful out of it. The person is pretty big, something terribly obvious here. What about, what about the mirror? If I just took it out, well. Can I use blemetry? Nope. There's something here. What's this? There's a lock on the chest. Lock's pretty old. I guess I wasn't speaking to the one won't work in this relic. We're probably better off just hunting for the key. Doesn't like we'll be able to get this old lock open right now. Uh, we were about to leave when I noticed a sheet of black paper that was under the chest. What's this? Carbon paper. I guess a kid like you wouldn't know. It's carbon paper. They use it to make copies. Lantern it was not dirty or covered in dust. It even looks like it's been hard being used recently. I feel slightly warm. It's been flaming recently. I don't trust it at all. I don't need to investigate this right now. It's pretty big. What am I supposed to do? I, I can get back to the command the ladder. Sure. We're better off looking for the key, apparently, though. What's over here? Nothing. Good. Anything here? Uh, I mean, that's pretty much the only thing that's, that we have to look at here, though. I am, I am low-key shaken. Yeah, hey, typewriter. It's a real typewriter here. There are black stains all over the keys. The keys are completely rusted, and I'm not even sure if it'll still work. There's paper on it, and, see, and I can see a part of it typed on it. No, on a... Uh, on a gassy? What? Right, no, on... on gassy. I have no idea. Blank. No, on a gassy? Well, obviously, you gotta fill in the blank. See the reference to that crane story. There's something fairly terrible related that would complete uh, X no on Agassi. So it's paper here though. They're everywhere. Most of them are blank sheets, but there's a few more some ass uh, they're still with some sort of title typed on the way. Uh Sitakiri Hana Kobotori I. Or Kobotori I is is this the the dead girls? I'm guessing they're for the secretary Suzume and Kobotori Jisan. Miroku's wor works are to are to the fairy tale, so it makes sense that titles references. Huh. What about these? Can I use the, the black paper on it? The carbon paper though? Can we use this? Bond carefully examines the typewriter. Well I think it'll work. You should be able to get some letters if you put in be if you put in between the hammers and the paper. I put the crumb paper in the typewriter to place of the ink ribbon. Nice. Can I use it now? So I should paper send it and she put a type on it. No, on a guy, see. Blank, on a guy, see. Obviously, I found the blank. Complete. I didn't mean to click it. What? Oh. I feel like one of the keys looks particularly dirty. Blood mystery, baby. I didn't even mean to do that, but that works too, I guess. <coughs> Close enough. I hear coughing sounds. They sound like they're from a person that's in pain. I think I've heard this voice before. This voice. Eventually, the coughing stops, and then... In a firm voice, the voice says something, though. Hmm, I see. Just now. That was him. 
it's the voice of the man on tape. Hmm, did you hear something? Engrave my fairy tale. That's what he said. As I speak the word, the typewriter begins to make sound of its own. Is he telling us to type with this? Russ and I should go to work. Already should be born in sense. Uh, a B A B S T U are the only working keys, so the word must only use those letters. So, uh, let me let me give them real quick. Let's from the blank section. Okay, yeah, we run of this. Hmm. A B two A B T S. I forgot what it was. Hmm. How do you? I guess refer to Sagar. So, Sticktari Suzman and Kobatori Jisan. Jisan. Fairy tales references though. So we need a reference or something though. You know, fuck. I'm a type. A B S T U. Okay. Hmm. There has to be a reference. I'm gonna just type U though. Let me, let me just mess this up. Mess this up so I can look at my notes. Uh, tranquil stuff here, incense, so. tape T. Mm, hand towel, no, tape us, sparkle. Because we have T H A S, and then the word, the, the type, the, the typewriter only works with A S and then T and like a U, I think. I don't know. Hmm. Let me look at for once. Let, let me actually look at the look at this though. String author. Ng. Fairy tale. Don't don't look inside. Old bamboo cutter's dream. Bob Hansen's Kaguya. It's not that, is it? Not that at all. Uh, I'll figure this out. Just give me a second. Something I'm missing. Six crow. Wait a minute. Wait a fuck a minute. I'm on something. Sugatari, Hana, and I. There were three victims, right? One of them was named I. I was Hana. But there was another one, though. So, uh, I'm guessing, wait, let me, it could be that the keyword we're looking for is actually the name of the third victim. And I'm pretty sure to, uh, ooh, he's a, it might spell Tsubasa actually though. Let me, two, 
by to boss there we go I feel I feel of it all I feel all of it of it out whoa whoa <clears throat> the keyboard starts cluttering its own again even the keys are stuck fast earlier we're now so now smoothly typing onto the paper whoa I think that's what they're for as psych psychography we gawk at it as the paper fills with sentences and rolls out a typewriter. We pick up the paper and look it over. This, will, this is what was written on it. I failed with many of them in the past. However, I managed to save the fourth birdie. Though it is a roll, it is their roll, all the birdies have lost all four limbs. It is surely saddening. The fourth birdie wails that it does not want to be seen and it wants to die. Truly a pity. I shall at least give her wings and transform her from a little birdie into a beautiful crane. If she becomes a crane, I'm sure it would show me utmost gratitude, even if it died. I thought the typewriter writes. Hey, Kijima. Suddenly, Bon points to the. The fuck is that? Take a look at that. The fuck is that? When did that when when did it get that way? I have no idea. There's now a bulge in the bed and looks like someone's sleeping on it. Ugh. It's like <laughs> do do I wanna look at that? I don't even know if I want to. But we have to. The bed is bulging suspiciously. The boy's about the size of a grown man lying down sideways. Sounds like rotten food. Oh no. Yeah. The powerful stench of our, our, our noses. We, we have been in this room several times before, but it never smelled like, like it did now. Something has definitely gone bad here. I'm sure I'm sure it's what's causing that bulge. What, the smell? Kijima, try looking under the sheet. Ah, <sighs> fine. The smell gets more and more intense as I get close to the bed. Trying to breathe as little as possible, I place my hand at the corner of the blanket and I pull it back in one motion. What the fuck? What the fuck is this? My what what, what gee what the fuck I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm fucking speechless. What even is this? On the bed lies a lump of meat that is covered in rot. The skin of what looks like to be a head on the of the pillow seems to be infested with maggots. It looks like the corpse of a man. Ugh. Why are there so many arms? Kijima. The, the author cut off the limbs. The most bizarre thing about the corpse is that there are many arms stapled together. They're all skinny and flexible looking. They must belong to little girls. Looks like the kids' arms are are embalmed. I'm guessing they belong to the girl from the ta- Why would anyone do this? Did the spirit do this? I wouldn't be so sure about that. Take a look at the tool next to the corpse. Oh, I see a scalpel, uh, a, a scalpel over there. Or that. It's surgical staple. It's used to staple open wounds shut. So we're stapling together flesh, you mean? Yeah, you got it. There's a chance that this man stapled those arms to his own body himself. Ex excuse me? This man stapled those arms to his own body himself? What the fuck? This, this is more gruesome than death mark, holy shit. I can't bear to look at all the freakish corpse any longer, so I cover and, I cover and leave the room. That corpse. It must be Yakumo Miroko? I don't know what he looks like, but judging by the white hair, I bet it was him. Hang on. If Miroko's here, then who's the screaming author? Ooh. Someone who died in this place while leaving behind an intense grudge. And if it isn't Miroku, you know who that leaves, right? Tubasa. Hearing the word grudge, my mind immediately thinks of. The tear filled screams and the place of the girls are recorded on those tapes. That means. 
I recall the contents of two boxes in the Onagai. Onagai, I see. And it came out of the typewriter earlier. I failed with many of them in the past. However, I managed to not kill the fourth birdie. Because I'm sure that even if I were to die, it would be able to die in peace. We haven't found the fourth girl. We haven't found the fourth girl doll, and that the title to Basa no Onagaisi indicates the spirit must be T, the last girl killed by Miroku. Fuck. I think my stomach turned once again, yet another time has happened since I entered this place. I am sure any sane person will feel the same. But I can't allow myself to look away from it. I have to face a tragic reality. If I can't, I might as well embrace my coming death. Alright. Let me give this to you. It was next to the pillar where the corpse was. Is it a key? Bond has a small pouch to me. It contains an old key, a syringe, with liquid, an empty medicine bottle. Hey, well, we got the key now. Lay one the bottle reads, med Medzolam. Med Medazolam. Got it. Medzolam. Med Med. I. Fuck! Is it. <laughs> ah, I got this. <clears throat> Medazolam is a benzodia zepine. It's a sedative. It is used for pre anesthetic medication. He might have been using it while he was operating on the kids. The key is probably. It probably goes to the chest in the attic. The size matches with the keyhole. The old chest sitting in the back of the attic that seemed like it was hidden away. Uh, seems like it's finally time to open it. Let's do this. It's feeling. The screams from the mouth pierce my brain. The tales have reached happily ever, ha happily ever after. Oh god. Don't peek in, don't peek in, don't peek in, don't peek in. Please don't look, please don't look, please don't look. <sighs> I don't have much time left. I gotta go to the attic. Alright, Bond, you better be ready. Because because this ends tonight. <clears throat> the door from earlier at the end of the path is gone. Not that. The ladder, damn it. Let's do this. We return to the attic. The paper lantern is emitting a white light. The hell is going on? The second door is now completely open, and I hear what sounds like pain breathing. <laughs> what do you mean you pleaded? After clicking my tongue, I walk towards the voice to see what's there. Huh? My whole body is wrapped in something that comes from overhead. I'm quickly jumped into the air, and impact causes me to drop my flashlight. Oh crap, the flashlight! I feel like I'm a bug that's flaying around inside a spider's web. Whoa! Fuck. What the hell is going on? Bon, you're in the way. Move over. How exactly do you want me to do that? I'm completely flipped upside down. Ugh. I squeeze my head against Bon's body so I can actually see. <gasps> what the fuck? The fuck is that? A dark silhouette falls from the ceiling and its outline begins to gradually form. So this is Screaming Author. From the front, a scream pierces my mind, and I see and I see stars for a minute. Think, how do I deal with this? Let's do this once again. Take a deep breath and try to focus my concentration on one point. But <sighs> I think the fact that I'm all tied up like this is preventing me from fully concentrating. You gotta be shitting me. Scene one. Let's do this. This ends here. I have to stop that voice. Damn it! I can't move. Hey, right, I can move an arm. That's something, right? What do we do? I got this. Uh. The wire is stretched very tightly. It feels like it cut me if I touched it. 
It's vibrating considerably. Maybe it's resonating with the scream. We can take the wire and um, can use this. Hold up. Commonly uses beer as beautiful old man or first string music. What if you use the stiff hair with the wire as like an instrument? What if? Let's go for it. That's right. Back at the passage. Rose mimicked a communicating cry and we managed to survive. Hurry it up. I'm gonna. Alright, take the clump of hair stiff out of my backpack. Clump of stiff hair. What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you gonna do with that? Stop talking. Just hurry up and get it. Okay, I got it. What do you want me to do with it? R rub it against the wire as hard as you can. What? What? Are, you know what? Whatever. Here he goes. Bond strings a bundle of hair and firmly rubs it on the wire. The hair is being rubbed on the wire. And the screaming gradually dies down. Whew. The screaming author moves a bit, which causes us to move around quite a bit too. In my new position, I can't see what's in front of me once again. On the bright side, the movement also frees out one of my arms. Oi, you alright? Damn it, these wires are gonna be ra wrapped tight. The voice coming from, from above me. It looks like the way I feel on my back is Bond. Forcing my head into a position where I can see again, I see the screaming author's bird like leg. Is it crying? J just kill it. If it screams again, we're done for. Not a crane. What the hell does it want me to do? Scene two. Alright. Uh, she said, not a crane. Hang on with her, though. Hmm. Would I have that if she hadn't, though? Not that. Not a crane. Where are my notes? I keep forgetting. Uh, not a crane. The creepy looking leg looks like a bird's. Perhaps because it noticed me looking at its legs, the screaming author gets noisy. Uh, let me let me look at my notes. Or not, not my notes, but my items here. Spray paint, yellow. Should be some left inside. Cute socks, not gonna help at all. Incense, not gonna help at all. I'm skimming to see if there any any hints I, I can I can get. Cuffin Bush advertising kids ballet recital and a and a duck duck lake. Take on Swan Lake. It features young kids whose feet will be painted yellow. This has to help somehow. Because we have the spray paint which is yellow. What if I paint what if I paint the legs yellow? Bird legs yellow. Fuck it. Yeet! I remember which one on the ballet flyer, that'll be from the bedroom. There we go. First act collecting the pieces of the ballet others. Second act, uh, Swan, Duck, Lake. Please enjoy the energy and spirit as it perform adorned in adorable colors. If the screaming author is Child T and the girl who was killed last, she must forget how she wasn't able to perform at the recital. Take out the spray paint towards each leg and start spraying. Hey, what are you doing? I paint the bird like leg yellow. The screaming author looks at its legs and... It feels like it smiles a bit. What? The screaming author reposi repositions itself once more. Whoa! I feel like I'm a blender. I'm in a blender or a, or a clothes dryer as my world flips upside down. Ugh. Ah, I'm all tangled up again. I can only move my leg. This time I'm, I'm, I'm upside down. It's a bit more slack now, but if it keeps going like this, it's gonna kill me. it all? What's it saying? Hey, what's wrong? If I don't pay attention, you're gonna get us slip over again. I know. Let's do this. Let's do this. What is, uh, scene three? Or is the last one? That uh, was scene three. Okay. She said burn it all, but... Mm, that's the head. The, the chest, I'm guessing, torso. 
Yeah, I can't look at the legs. Chest too far away. I can look at the wires, but I don't think they'd be helping any useful here, though. The lantern. I see the fire from the paper lantern at the time time it matter, but my head. I'd be able to reach it. If she wants us to burn at all, we need some we need something that can catch on fire. Let's try to take on it. It'll, it'll take a while to get it to light. Bamboo charcoal. I don't know what it looks like, but um Besides we, we might not be we, we might not be able to reach it actually though. Anything else we have that I can catch on fire? <gasps> the incense! Oh, peasant smelling incense sticks. The peasant smells spicy. They seem like they would still burn pretty well as they're quite dry. We can use the incense on the lamp, though. I mean, it's a stick, so we, we could reach it, though. Take the incense from the backpack and light it on fire with the paper lantern. The paper lantern. That seems far. Can I reach it? Bond tries to reach the lantern. Damn it. Incense just can't quite reach the paper lantern. Oh, fuck. Well, in that case. Oi, right, it's gonna hurt for a bit, but focus and power through, okay? Wait, what are you planning? My reply to Bond is a heavy kick to the back with my free leg. Oh, god, that hurts. The force of the kick is enough to get the incense to touch the lantern's flames. The smoke creeps out from incense where it towards the fire end. It quietly starts to burn. Alright. Obtain lit incense. Alright, I have a fire source now. I just gotta find a spot that'll burn easily. Right, I guess one more flip. The screaming author flaps again and my world spins around once more. Jesus. I'm not basically face to face with it, which is which which makes it seem intentional. Whoa. Bond is rendered speechless, so am I. Like like just look at like, like just looking at it is terrifying. The screaming author sounds like it's trying to tell us something. Damn it, I'm all wrapped up. I'm all wrapped up again. Hold on, I'll end this. <clears throat> the last scene. This will determine everything. Hmm. If you told us to, to burn it all, and yet now I just plan us to, to hurry it up. And we have to find a place that'll catch fire easily. The clothing, though, the legs, the legs are, are, look like they're made out of copper, so they might not actually work at all. Hair, it can be flammable though, but generally it isn't. I think I don't know. Fuck it, we'll go for the for the clothing. I can see the torso of the screaming author. Hair to see its tattered clothes. Where should I strike to finish it off? We'll use the incense to burn off to burn the clothing off. Not not in a perverted way, just to catch them on fire and then potentially kill it. Where is the incense? Here it is, the incense. This, it's over. Bon, pass me that incense. Like it's that simple. Eh. Bon moves around through a bound and tries to hand me lit incense, but we try a bunch of times, but I still can't get it. It's no use, I can't reach you. Guess I have no choice. Throw it to me. <laughs> Guess we're all in on this. All right, here's hoping we don't crap out. With a flick of the wrist, lit incense can toss towards me in an odd arc. If I just sit like this, I won't catch it. Uh, come on, reach. The wire digs deep into my flesh, but I fight through the pain and reach out for it. Uh, hot. The incense scorches my fingertips, but I manage to grab hold of it. Nice catch. Now finish it. This'll do it. I stretch out my arm as far as I can and press the lit incense into the screaming author. Hey, now what's happening? Just hold on, and I'll. The screaming author stares at us quiet, uh, stares at us quietly, but then it shakes its head light slightly and takes a deep breath to scream once again. But just at that moment, it, its clothes catches fire and the flames engulf them. You laughing? Oh. Huh. Inside the flames, the screaming author kicks his legs and joyfully, almost joyfully, and then falls to ashes on top of the, t the tummy mat. 
We lived. Ow. The wires that held us tight are cut, and we dropped pretty roughly. Well, it looks like we'll live through this. Yeah, somehow. Like usual, the curse disappears. But wondering how much how much longer this is gonna keep happening makes me depressed. I look at the floor where the screaming author falls the ground, but it had disappeared. Now there was just a pool of blood in its place. If you use a power, you should be able to get some information about your sister, right? Come on, hurry up and try it. Yeah. Getting close to the pool of blood, to the pool of blood, so I put my fingers up against it. Do this. <laughs> I see Ami trapped in a place that's supposed to be the bathroom. The same scene as before. Mm -hmm. It is now two weeks since Ami's disappearance, but I've been worried about her health. But I tell the vision, it doesn't look like Ami was different than the time she was, and from then than she was when she was taken. I want to get out. How long do I have to stay in this place? Mom, big brother. Ami groans in a tearful voice with her head dropped down. Drooped. The fuck? I hear a high-pitched sound like two hard objects rubbing against each other next to Ami. Hmm? Ami's entire body lurches up as if she was hit with an, with an electric shock. Ami, I came to play with you. <gasps> what the fuck? Kakuya appears and gently pets Ami's head. What the fuck? At the same time, a doll arm under her sleeve tightly grips Ami's body. Almost as if it was intended to be seen by anyone watching this vision. Ami, have you gotten used to Kakuryo? Hmm. Ami seems to be refusing to raise her head to answer Kakuya's question. Uh, Kak Kakuryo is a different world. You used to live in Utsushio. Here you won't get hungry or get old. You just keep on playing with Kakuya, right here. Until Kakuya gets bored. Hmm. If they get bored, will it take me back? No, I won't. I'll break you. Hmm? Kakuya doesn't like chatting. Because you reveal secrets. Huh? But what did I tell? Who did I tell? Kakuya must be upset about me saying something about NG. But Ami wouldn't know what I, that I know. Because she doesn't know that I'm watching her like this. But you can relax. I won't break you until I get bored. Hmm. Ami, what do you want to play today? Tag, hide and seek, board games, house, or... Ami. Seems like you saw her. So, how'd it go? From what, from what Kakuya said, it sounds like Ami is trapped in a place called Kakuryo. Kakuryo? Sounds like the Kakuryo mission in Shinto. What, you know something about it? It's just the basics of the religion. We're, we're, in, we're in Utsushio, the realm of the living. Kakuryo refers to the realm of the dead. I'm not entirely sure the Kakuryo that Kakuya was talking about is the same thing. That's not what I'm interested in. How do I get to Kakuryo? Why the hell do you think what I know? I bet even Rose would know. We don't even know what Kakuryo means by Kakuryo. So how do I know how to get there? Huh. I, I now know that Ami is in Kakuryo. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what or where that is. Am I really powerless to help her? Don't get down, Kijima. Focus on what you can do for now. Let's open up the chest. That's what we came here for. I put the key in the lock and lifted the lid of the chest. I saw a small, oddly shaped doll in a thick envelope. What? I feel compelled to scoop up the doll. Is that Kakuya? It's an odd design with a girl's head on top of, the sh of a shrinky body. The face has a similar hairstyle and hair color. It does a very good job of looking like Kakuya. 
Why is a doll with Kakuya's face here? Kakuya? Seriously? Why would this be in the, the Miracle Residence? Don't ask me, how the hell should I know? The talk of dolls reminds me of the dolls with the girl spirits and then what we, what we found. I wonder if there's some sort of bloody source related to this doll too. I couldn't help but think the doll is important, so I shove it in my pocket. And what about the envelope? I open, I, know, I open up the envelope upon your quest. It contains scratch paper with detailed descriptions of things and some photos of girls. It's a memo left behind by, by Yakuma Miroku. It looks like he wrote about the girls he killed. But even with this, we still can't figure out why Miroku did such a horrible thing. And these photos are... In the photos, I see a girl dancing on the stage wearing a white ballet outfit. This is from a ballet recital. That's right. The victim went, went missing when she... When she was coming home from ballet practice. She was... I recall the appearance of the screaming author. Turned into... That? The screaming author... What well, the screaming author didn't actually want us to see. But it was probably... Maybe that's why she attacked us here. She was probably afraid to be compared to the photos of her old self that were in there. We leave the burnt smelling attic, all of us, full of dreary, of dready feelings. Dreary feelings? Well, you two certainly took took quite a long time. I had to be filled in immediately, but the patrols are just about to start. We should leave here immediately. Let's meet up by Black Rabbit. I'll tell you what happened at the bar. Yeah, alright. Here's a bit of memory racer after all the crap we, went, we just went through. <sighs> like, like the screaming author has 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 to be like the most nightmare fuel in, inducing thing so far here. I part with the other two and head to the station. Because I went into the train, because because I enter into the train, though I managed to just get to the station earlier than they, than they do. I can't read it at all. Get some water. Uh, not to me. You're looking pissed. What's up? I find Atsum I find Aunt not to me the black rabbit. He, he turns to me looking unhappy. Something's off. She's not her usual friendly self. Perfect timing. I was about to call you. What's up? A detective was just here. A lady named Oe. You know her, right? Oh, it, it's Rena. Oe. Yeah, I remember her. That's all later, right? Miss Oe is helping me with Ami's case. You told me a lot. Like that you've been out late at night recently. I guess the detective went and ran her mouth to Aunt Natsumi. Is this her way of trying to pressure me to because I was being uncooperative with her? You're doing something dangerous, aren't you? I can tell from the scratches on your arms. I looked down on my arms and realized I got a number of scratches on them. I must have gone and I was being swung around by a screaming author. You're doing this for Ami, aren't you? Looking for some girl in a kimono, right? How do you know this? Miss Owe told me what you said when I talked to police. After Ami saw the advantage from the bathroom, you met her girl in a kimono. And that girl said she kidnapped Ami, right? Yeah, that's right. So, she's like Miss Owe said. The other player I talked to didn't tell me anything about that. Probably because it sounds so absurd. But why don't you tell me yourself? I was going to, but you just left. Isn't it obvious? I didn't think you'd believe me either. Yeah, I probably would have taken you seriously. But I haven't learned anything in these past two weeks. At this point, your story about her being spirited away is my best lead. Akira, you, you'll tell me, right? It looks at me with a burning determination. The desperation of a mother who lost her child. The persistence to find that child. I can't keep hiding it from her. Okay, I'll tell you everything. Give me a few minutes, I got some people who helped me. If they, if they help me explain it, it'll make everything a bit more easy to believe. Eventually, Bon and Rose arrive at the bar. After formally introducing Anatomy to them, we start talking about everything that's happened. We talk about Kakuya, our investigation, spirits, Kakuya's game. When I'm unsure how I should explain something, Bon and Rose help me out. Anatomy listens quietly till the very end, never interrupting. Hmm. So that's what happened. She seemed she seemed shocked. That's not unexpected. But actually I have actually faced a number of spirits now and I'm still wondering if all just some nightmare. I understand if you don't believe our story, but every bit of it's true. Your daughter was kidnapped by this Kakuya doll. We and, we and Kijun are pursuing it. I don't want you to get your hopes up for no reason, but at least your daughter's still alive. 
According to Kijima, people don't get hungry in the realm of, on the realm of the dead. Realm of the dead, Kakuryo. She repeats those words to herself quietly. Not to me. If there's anything that makes a connection to you, let us know. We need all the information we can get. All right. I don't remember it very well, but I think Miroku once wrote a story about the realm of the dead. Oh, Yakumo Miroku again, huh? This guy seems to have quite a few connections to Kakuya. Could all be a mere coincidence? How fascinating. <sighs> when I hear Miroku's name, I remember all the disgusting and grotesque things at Hollow Knight. <laughs> Not this. Of course, with the girl's arm set into it. As will become of, of Yakumo Miroku, the children's author who murdered the little girls. His acts of insanity and the girls' screams are all recorded on those tapes. Wait. Hey, on out to me. I want to ask something. <laughs> Was Miroku a pedophile? What? <laughs> her eyes go wide at the unexpected question, but I press her again. Was Miroku a piece of crap who got off on tormenting kids? Mm, from what I know of him, he didn't have any hobbies like that. Never heard of Satomi mentioned either, and she was obsessed with him. Huh. I'm sure he had his guilty pleasures so that no one else will find out. But the way Miroku sounded on that tape still bothers me. I can't believe someone who spoke so calmly could be doing something so, so, so private. Hey, Kijima, what's bothering you? You can't explain what we saw there without concluding that the guy was insane. Yeah, I know, but... Something is bugging me. It's on top of my tongue, but I just can't figure out how to put it into words. Anyway, I had a request for you, Miss Manager. Would you look into that book of Miroku that, re that references the Realm of the Dead? Just in case, you know. Yes, I'll do my best. Bon. Rose. I'm putting Ami's fate in your hands. Aunt not me shudders and breaks out into tears. <laughs> we won't let you down, miss. We'll find your daughter. As a reward, I'd like a bottle of, of blood red ground crew. Akira, I'm sorry I'm putting you in danger, but there's no one else I can turn to now. Please save Ami. I will. I have to. Thanks. The next thing I know, it's already past midnight. We say goodbye to Aunt Natsumi and leave the bar. You wanna save? Well then, I'll be taking my leave. Alright then. I am a denizen of the night after all. There's much to do before the sun rises. <sighs> Stop trying to sound cool. We all know you're probably just gonna wander around drink until the break of dawn. Damn. Kijima, let me know if Kakuya contacts you again. I'll be there in a flash if you need me. I doubt it, but hey. Rose appears into the direction of a, ta of a taxi stand. Huh, I finally feel the woman. I was actually considering ending the video there, but then I was like, no, I can't I, I can't end it there though. I don't I won't end the video until we reach the next day. I can't handle selfishness selfish inconsiderate women like her though. You two actually seem pretty similar in that in that category to me, old man. <laughs> Same to you, Torp. Anyway, come with me. Huh? Where are we going? I'd rather just get some sleep. Quit gripping. Griping. I'm pulling rank and telling you to come out, so shut up and follow me. Damn. What are you, a drill sergeant? Why are you dragging me? If it's a pachinko, if it's a pachinko or mahjong, I'm going home. Where? Well, to the Miracle Residence. I go back to the Miracle Residence with Bon. On the way, I ask Bon abruptly why we're we going there. But all I guess some lame reply, like, just to take care of some business. I gotta see when we, say that when we get there myself. Ugh. Why do, we, why do we gotta do this now? Unlike kids, I don't want to get anything like a summer break. I'm busy during the day, so I gotta fit this stuff in wherever I can. They get national holidays and stuff, right? Yeah, but that's horse racing season. It's not a vacation for me. I, sh I really shouldn't have asked. I just wasted my time. That's what you get for playing detective. Come on, let's get to move on. Come on, where the fuck are we going? So where are we going in here? We're not messing around with that corpse, are we? Shut it. I don't want to remember that. We're going up to the attic. For what? We pass through the hidden pathway and climb up the old, old rickety wooden ladder. <coughs> We're back in the attic again. I can still faintly detect the burnt stench. Damn, bro. Alright, let's get down to business. What business do we have here? <laughs> Uh, Bomb puts his hand in his pocket. Takes out a small, thin box. 
But what's in that? Incense, obviously. We're holding a memorial, though just a quick one. Oh, fair enough. Come on, say a quick prayer too. You don't want to get about, you don't want to get on the bad side. I guess you're right. Bond takes a small incense burner out of his pocket and place in a corner of the room. He sets up incense and lights it. A unique fragrance of incense fills the room. That should do it. Honestly, it would have been better to do this right after we took care of her. But the, par but the patrolman was about to come around. You take this stuff pretty seriously, huh? You always, you always do stuff like this? <laughs> I'm not that virtuous. I only offer, a, offer up incense when kids have gone wrapped up in a case. I, I lost my son to a spirit. Oh. What? Did you say he had a son? <laughs> What's that look for? Is it, is it honestly so strange that I have a wife and kid? Well, they're both ancient ancient history to me now, anyway. It wasn't Kakuya that, Kakuya that did it, was it? No, it wasn't. The spirit's already been dealt with. The head of that one family had a crappy detective had Wait, what? The spirit had already been dealt with? The head of that one family and a crappy detective got it? Wait. Bond's son was in Deathmark? Oh shit. You have the guy who was your sponsor? Yeah, that's right. Guess who else told you? Then there's no there's nothing to take there's nothing to take revenge on. There's no reason for you to risk your life hunting spirits. That's part of my journalistic nature. While I was pursuing my son's killer, I was introduced to the world of spirits. Uh, each and every spirit is hiding some dark truth underneath all, all its artif artificies. Artificies. <laughs> I can't even say it. Uh, I guess I'm just helplessly drawn to uncovering those truths. I want to expose all their secrets. Bond's eyes light up in the darkness, like he's stalking some kind of majestic beast. But I feel like I also catch a hint of sadness in that sparkle too. Maybe it's just my imagination. And to do that, I'll risk putting myself in danger, and occasionally help put a kid to rest. So you better make yourself useful, Kijima. I will, I'll do my best. What's that smile? It doesn't suit you at all. Not a rambling. We're done here, so let's head back. I try to flash her down her feet as we make our way to the ladder. The blessing on the floor emerges from the darkness as the light catches. Rest in peace, young lady. By the time we reach the, sta by the time we reach the station, the last train has already left. Uh, I've got no other choice, so I get a taxi to take me back home. Of course, I have Bond cover the fare. When I close the front door, I feel like the energy drain out of me, and I let out a big sigh. This day is finally over. There we go. Got that done. Uh, it's the corpses. Yeah, yeah. Just a summary, real quick. Quick summary. So updated the quick summary. It's fine. We're here. Time to return tonight. Yes, I'm going to bed. Fuck this. I'm fine dealing with no spirits today. <laughs> Collapsing onto the bed, I shut my eyes. I dropped the cap to my Gatorade. God damn it. Those torture, those tortures that took place in that Miroku residence. The four murdered girls, plus the killer himself, Yakumo Miroku, turned up dead too. What the hell was going on in that mansion? I don't know the answer to that yet. Will we find out soon? My thoughts run away from me, and before I know it, the sky is bright out. I really should get some sleep. Hmm. Save. There we go. Finally, we reached, we reached the the other day. There we go. Now, <laughs> now I can actually end the video. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll, I'll see you. I'll, I'll see you next time. <laughs> next time, where we take on our our next spirit potentially. Thank you and have a 